So, uh, how often do you actually use cash? Um, not much. Here in Shenzhen, China, a city many refer to as Silicon Valley East, cash is quickly becoming a thing of the past. People aren't pulling out the plastic much either. All over China, more and more consumers are going all mobile all the time. And they're not doing this using screen after screen of apps. They're mostly using just two. Two mega apps from two Chinese companies that are also collecting almost unfathomable amounts of consumer data. In this episode of Moving Upstream, we explore what's behind this made in China phenomenon and whether it's poised to sweep the planet. Soon after crossing the bridge from Hong Kong to mainland China, we realize the extent to which we're outsiders. We see everyone everywhere scanning QR codes, paying for food, transport, and consumer goods with their phones. Since we don't have Chinese bank accounts, when in Shenzhen, we couldn't do as the Shenzhenians. My colleague Matt McDonald and I needed a guide, someone to show us what this pay with your phone business is all about. Naomi Wu, one of the more eccentric members of Shenzhen's tech community, agreed to be that for us. She asked us to meet her at her office. It's one of those trendy co-working spaces. We're headed to the uh, snack bar. All right, I'll take one of these. Here at this co-working space, payment with cash or credit cards isn't an option. When I'm working on the Raspberry Pi project... Naomi, at 24 years old, is a tech developer and internet personality. We chose her because she promotes Shenzhen's tech lifestyle. Naomi also identifies herself as a maker. What do you make? I make, you know, for, in my video, I make tons of impractical things. It's impractical a, things. I always do things as a proof of concept. In February, Naomi will grace the cover of the Tech World prestigious Make magazine. Okay, so she's not your typical Chinese person, but she says the way she uses her phone is. In 2016, Chinese consumers spent $9 trillion in mobile payments, dwarfing the $112 billion spent in the U.S. Do you have cash in your purse right now? I still have it. Like from, I still think it's emergency. Sometimes they don't have the changes to give you and you have to wait. So annoying. Yeah, so annoying. All right, the first right stop on our adventure... Lunch. Ready yeah. for lunch? Lunch. We can buy the meal before we go. But why are we, why are we paying for the meal before we even go to the restaurant? Because it's a little bit cheaper than paying there. It's maybe we pay in advance, maybe we save like three or four dollars and then... Oh really? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit frugal. To get there, we could rent a bike. I'm going to scan the QR code on the bike. So the code is free two, free two. Okay. Let's go for a ride. Naomi says bikes aren't her thing. So we decided to call a taxi using, again, the WeChat app. Taxis here don't take credit cards. They do accept, indeed prefer, WeChat Pay. Hello. Naomi shows our prepaid reservation, and we hit the buffet. One thing that's feeding the Chinese appetite for mobile app payments is food. According to mobile payment leader Tencent, in China, three quarters of fast food purchases are made using mobile. One company is reimagining the grocery store experience. Alibaba's Huma Supermarket harnesses China's QR code scanning culture. Every product in the store is scannable, even the crabs. Find out where they came from, add them to your favorites. So later from home, you can order them for delivery. What do you buy most often? The app knows, allowing it to serve you personalized recommendations. And it's all linked to Alipay. Our colleague Lisa Lin visited a Huma in Shanghai for us. The significance of Huma is the fact that mobile payments 
has given rise to a whole new set of business models or industries in China that would never have been possible in the West. Huma, which has announced plans to open 2,000 more of these supermarkets, is also an example of how mobile payment platforms in China are creating ecosystems that are about much more than just the final transaction. In the early 2000s, Alibaba launched Alipay to facilitate user transactions on Taobao, the Chinese equivalent of eBay. Around the end of the decade, Taobao introduced its mobile wallet features. It let Alipay members transfer money to one another or split bills using QR codes. Good timing. That was right when the number of mobile users in China began to skyrocket. One of the biggest reasons is the fact that smartphones in China are really cheap. And that's made the smartphone really affordable for the masses. And many people began finding themselves in China's supercharged economy with more money in their bank accounts and began linking those accounts to Alipay. Not many Chinese people had credit cards. One factor, Chinese authorities made it difficult for Visa and MasterCard to get a foothold there. In 2013, Tencent got in on the action, bringing mobile payments to its wildly popular WeChat app. In just three years, the newcomer has grabbed up 40% of China's mobile payment transactions. This was the year before Apple announced Apple Pay, which in terms of users is now way behind its Chinese rivals. With Apple adding payments into iMessage, that's, that's out of the WeChat playbook. Here's what intrigued us, the made in China innovations happening on these two platforms. Naomi uses both WeChat and Alipay. Alipay mainly for online shopping on Taobao. This is live. Yeah, this is live. It's like the home shopping network meets Facebook Live. If I don't like the color, I'm like, I don't like the color. Do you have, like, Naomi asks to see the color she prefers. So she's going to try it on for us? That's just one feature of the app. Taobao and WeChat are now platforms in which dozens of app functions are rolled into one. There's so many things you can do with just one app in China. And I guess that's, to me, what's the most interesting. The fact that they want to have one app to rule them all. We visited the WeChat development campus in Guangzhou, China, to learn about the latest feature for keeping users in the app, so-called mini programs. The basic idea is to create a mini app for every place or thing that you can visit, effectively bringing the offline world and all the money you could spend in it into the WeChat universe. A lot of mini apps are food related, and in China, almost anything you want can come to you. For example, McDonald's. Okay, see? The mini apps don't need to be downloaded or installed. They simply disappear when you're finished using them. The user data collected from them doesn't. Yan Zhu is the operations manager for WeChat's payment division. It allows Alibaba and Tencent to collect so much information about you. They know what you buy, they know where they know where you're buying it, they know how much you're spending. And this in turn has allowed them to provide a lot of other services beyond just payments. The bottom line is the Chinese in general are less concerned about data privacy than the consumers out in the West. I just think like in, in America, we're a little so much more like protective of our information and our data and, and we're, we're very scared of this idea of like an overarching system that knows everything that we've done, all the purchases we've made that day. So I think maybe that's part of why we're not rushing in to adopt all this new technology. That's what, that's what gets me, is that you're in China. The government can know everything about the you. The government already know everything about me. Just, just yeah, so if I, I'm not committing a crime, they don't give a shit. Western expats we met in China, like Duncan Turner, who leads a tech accelerator in Shenzhen, 
sees the Chinese mobile pay way spreading. So, you know, I'm a Westerner living here, but I never have cash. Never? Never, no. I was actually thinking about this the other day, like I, I can't remember the last time I had RMB cash on me, because I pay for everything through WeChat. Yeah, we're going to see more innovation born in China. There's all this emerging innovation which is happening for them, which will suddenly become mainstream. Are they ahead of us here? It, it's a strange realization, but yes. Thanks for watching this episode of Moving Upstream. I'm Jason Bellini in Shenzhen, China. Hope you'll check out more of our episodes. Send us your comments, emails. We look forward to hearing from you.